the plane to turn right or left, you need to use the rudder. In my previous video, we were able to successfully build a fixed wing aircraft and understand the basics of flight. Pushing a little bit further, I experimented with ailerons to understand its effect on the aircraft. Also have a, an aileron. I was able to fly the plane successfully, but my lack of skills in flying caused me to panic. This was a bad crash. Um, that was the first time for me to use an aileron. And I was able to bank it left or right. But unfortunately, ailerons also makes it roll uh, upside down. Unfortunately, there is just no cutting corners in developing your flying skills. It needs time, effort, and lots and lots of crashes. That was an awful crash. I still don't know how to fly with ailerons. Thus, I conceded and decided it was time for me to get help from flight controllers. But first, I have to rebuild the aircraft. Instead of just elevator, rudder, and the hydral wings from the previous video, this time I also added ailerons. I add the servos on both left and right wings. Also cut a small strip on the wings to get that the hydral shape. Add tape at the bottom for support. And slide through both servo cables on the opening. Then glue the wings together. For the electronics, the Pixhawk flight controller is the heart of it all. Among other things, it has the ability to stabilize the aircraft in flight. It can also fly the aircraft autonomously and program flight missions. I use a long housing for the electronics so I could arrange the components and obtain the right balance. I also plug the cables accordingly to the diagram. The GPS is placed on top to acquire better signal. Two openings were cut both in front and behind the wings to access the battery and the flight controller respectively. After plugging GPS, I plug the aileron on channel 1 using a servo Y connector, followed by elevator cable on channel 2. Lastly is rudder on channel 4 as channel 3 is for throttle. Then tidy up with cable tie. I also made sure I have access to the power cable. A weight is added to fine-tune the balance. I also added a barbecue stick to fix in place the housing. A hole is cut on the side to access the flight controller with micro USB. Now to check the balance. To 
install firmware on flight controller, we use the Mission Planner app. Install the latest plane version. To verify that installation is successful, verify COM port field is populated with fixed wing. To calibrate accelerometer, just follow the steps and position the aircraft on all six sides as instructed. For calibrate level, I added a few degrees nose up as recommended as this will be the actual position the autopilot will hold the aircraft during flight in assisted modes. Compass calibration is to face north and rotate the aircraft on its pitch. Facing west, rotate the aircraft on its side. Repeat until compass calibration is successful. Radio calibration is to move the sticks on its limits. For servo output, I use the default aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder setup. I also checked reverse on the aileron for this particular setup. For flight modes, I assign manual, fly-by-wire A, fly-by-wire B, loiter, and RTL using my RC radio dial. Now, it took me a long time to figure out the EEC calibration, so if you want to calibrate the EEC, just follow the steps carefully. The main thing is to be able to arm the aircraft first. To do this is to change the arming check temporarily to zero at the parameter list. This will let you arm the aircraft regardless of the GPS, compass, and other component status. Make sure the mode is in manual. Press the hardware safety switch until the light stops blinking. Arm the aircraft by throttle stick all the way down and right. Raise the throttle stick to maximum. Plug the battery. After you hear the beeps, throttle stick all the way down. And another set of beeps will tell you that calibration is successful. Then you can test the motor. I can't hardly stress enough, remove the props during this calibration. Sit back arming check to 1 and click right param button to save. I then test manual mode and make sure all the control surfaces are in the right directions. For fly-by-wire A mode, the control surfaces stay in the middle until you tilt the aircraft, then they will move to counteract the tilt as can be seen. Time for a test flight, baby. Okay, so this is a Pixhawk fly by wire A. And I hope this works. Uh, I spent a lot of time configuring this. In 
fly-by-wire A, the aircraft will hold its pitch and roll position, keeping the aircraft level until you apply control on it. Ooh, that's fly. The altitude will somehow drift depending on the amount of throttle applied, but no matter how much roll you apply, it will never roll upside down as the angle of roll is limited by the autopilot. Fly by wire B. For fly by wire B, both the pitch and roll positions are kept, and also is the altitude. All you have to do is turn left or right with the altitude staying the same. Fly by itself. Just look at that. So cool. Woo <laughs> I don't have to fly it. Woohoo! I have a flying robot. For loiter mode, the aircraft fly by itself in a predetermined radius around the point the loiter mode was switched. I never felt so glad with flying. It takes away all the information overload for new flyers. Okay, so the trick now is learning how to land it. <laughs> it's crazy. It's still flying there. Yeah, my background. It's just crazy. Woohoo! I love it. Okay, cross fingers that I can land it safely. Another pass by. <laughs> okay, let's land it. Before it loses power, let's not push it. Such a sigh of relief after landing, as I only need to decrease the throttle to make that gradual descent. It broke the prop during uh, landing, but I'm so glad that it worked. And I feel confident now uh, building other models. I don't have to spend most of my time fixing the drone. So yeah, uh, it was scary, but oh, it, it, it worked out in the end. So yeah, flying robotics, baby. Thank you guys for watching. And if you like this video, check my other videos as well.